if I had to give you one pointer or one orientation that is central throughout the awakening process, one statement that really gets to the heart of what we're doing here, that would be practical, usable, and accessible at all times, and addresses all levels of realization in one way or another, it would be this. Don't believe a single thought. Now, obviously, I unpack that quite a bit in the way I talk about this process. And initially, we talk about thought uh, referring to conceptual thought, beliefs about myself, narratives that run through the mind, believing those and getting hypnotized by them in real time, and then recognizing that and disidentifying. This is very important in the beginning. Once we go through a shift in identity, things change quite a bit. We start to have much more access to direct experience, knowing access to direct experience. We also start to move through a lot of shadow material because once these endless dividing moments in the mind start to cease, then that which is kept at bay by that, by all that thought structure, starts to come up, starts to come into consciousness. This is experienced as shadow material coming out of the shadow into light. It's experienced as repressed emotional experiences coming to the surface to be felt. It's experienced as not being in control of everything that happens in and around you all the time in the way you thought you were before. So there's a lot to navigate and work through once we start to move through shadow material. And even then, the experience of direct, let's say perception, let's say the experience of actual uh, intimacy, actual immersion becomes very important but even though that's the case, you also know that that's natural. That's going to happen spontaneously. It's already here. It's already the case. Non-duality isn't a truth that you realize. Non-duality is just the nature of appearance already. The realization that there's no separate self or separate anything, that there is not self and other before and after time and space and all, that realization and to live through direct authentic authentication, the experience of that is natural. It's spontaneous. So what we're really doing is continuing to disidentify from thought essentially, but we start to disidentify from more fundamental thought, like non-conceptual thought. We start to disidentify from deeper more hidden beliefs, subtler beliefs, but very important beliefs. So it's still a matter of not being dragged around by thought. It's still a matter of questioning thoughts, labels, narratives, beliefs. It's still a matter of ultimately not believing a single thought. So if I were to give one pointer, and someone asked me this, that's why I thought to make a video about it. But if I could give one pointer, it would be something like that. And where does that lead? What's the point of all of that? Someone also recently said to me that they thought uh, my, my message was something like, um, this is all about integrating into the relative person or something. There's an aspect of this process that that, that is the case and that does happen and it's important. Um, but that's, that's not what I would say the, the salient features of deep realization or liberation are. I would say the salient features are something like freedom from extremes, to put it into B Buddhist terminology, freedom from illusion, specifically the fundamental illusion of identity. It's non-accumulation, endless non-binding, non-grasping, non-aversion, 
It's direct knowledge of the intimate, of the always already the case, non-dualistic nature of appearance in all five sense gates. All of these aspects I'm describing are um, necessary because if anyone's missing, then the first one is not um, satisfied, the, the freedom from extremes. So if any, any of these fixations remain, the fixation to grasp, the fixation to control, the fixation to push away, the fixation to intellectualize, the fixation in integration, the fixation in disintegration, the fixation in time, the fixation in space, the fixation in self, the fixation in no self. If any of these fixations remain, then again, the first pointer in this list, freedom from extremes, is not satisfied. So that's where it leads. But as far as what the process entails, essentially is disidentifying from thoughts and then one way or another questioning the most fundamental thoughts. Thoughts about reactivity, thoughts about distance, separation, space, time, and identity ultimately. So there you go. Maybe it's easier said than done, but it all does come back down to not believing thoughts and making a very, very detailed pointed investigation of what is a thought and what's not a thought. And you're going to be really surprised by how much of what you think you experience is thought. <laughs>